600,000 people go missing in the United States each year. Tens of thousands remain mysteriously missing. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Mysteriously Missing. I'm Justine. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Karen. Today's episode, we are talking about Fallon Michelle Cooksey. She's been missing since June 11, 2018. This episode retraces Fallon's last known location in upstate South Carolina. In the early morning hours of June 11th, a male friend had picked up Fallon at or near a residence on Highway 29 North near Grover, South Carolina, and this was per the Charlie Project. But as we researched this case, which it was a very difficult case for us to research, there wasn't a lot of information, so we had to go with a Facebook page, a missing poster, and some news stories that actually had some errors. But we believe the Charlie Project profile on Fallon has some slight errors. We believe they meant Grover, North Carolina, because Highway 29 does not run through Grover, South Carolina. The male friend had then drove Fallon to the Gaffney Inn in Gaffney, South Carolina. Her cell phone pinged in that area, and she was active on text messaging until about 9.32 a.m., after which either the phone was turned off or the battery had died. Fallon has never been seen or heard from again. Fallon lived with her mother in Falston, North Carolina, at the time of her disappearance, which is about 20 miles north of Grover, North Carolina, where her male friend picked her up. Gaffney Inn is where she was last, her phone last pinged, is about 13 miles from Grover, and that is in South Carolina. Now, what she was wearing when she went missing was a black Greg Olson Carolina Panthers football jersey, and it had the number 88 on the front, which was in black and white. And she was also wearing white shorts, a silver silver hoop earrings, and a black choker necklace. Fallon also had a few piercings and tattoos. Her ears were double pierced. She also had a tattoo of a butterfly on the back of her left shoulder with the name Nick on the top and the name Noah on the bottom, a tattoo of the sun on the top of her right foot, which was orange, blue, and yellow, and her right knee had a long crescent moon-shaped scar. Fallon was born on June 6, 1988. She was 30 years old when she went missing. She'd be 31 today. Her height is 4'11", weight 110 pounds, and checking the height, both the Charlie Project and NamUs did describe her as 4'11", so she's a tiny girl. Yeah. She has blonde hair that comes down below her shoulders and blue eyes. And as we mentioned, Fallon had been living with her mother, Melissa, in Falston, North Carolina. Fallon listed Lawndale as her residence on Facebook, which is about four miles from Falston. So her mom's house is probably somewhere in that area between Falston and uh, Lawndale. Right. Now, she left behind two children. One of her children has autism. The children's father is Nicholas Pope. Fallon has other family members who live in the Blacksburg area, and Fallon mentions Blacksburg as her hometown on her Facebook page. She also has a sister, Gracie Holland, and it appears her father had passed away in 2006. She has a cousin, Brandy, and another cousin, Jamie, and we actually have an audio clip of her cousin, Jamie, who has been very active in finding Fallon. I'm Fallon's cousin, Jamie. Her and I are only three months apart, and we have been close since we were born. She is loved and missed more than anybody knows. We just want to know where she is and what happened. It's been seven months now, and we just miss her and want her home more than anything. Now, Fallon worked as a stay-at-home mom, and this was according to her Facebook page. She graduated from Blacksburg High School in 2002. She had a bit of a troubled past. In June 19, 2017, she was arrested for indecent exposure and a DWI Level 1. She was released a week later on June 26, 2017. And on April, in April of 2018, she was cited for public disorderly conduct. 
Now, there was something interesting. Fallon had put up some cryptic posts on Facebook before she disappeared. The first one was on March 7th, 2018, and that post read, Depression is real. People can smile all day and still be broken inside. The next post was on June 4th, 2018, and that one read, The loneliest moment in someone's life is when they are watching their whole world fall apart and all they can do is stare blankly. Now, the third one was June 8th, 2018. That one read, you'll hear rumors that I'm crazy. You should believe them. And then the last post on the day she went missing, which was June 10th, she said, I buried my worries beneath the cold earth, hoping they would not rise up to haunt me. But in the middle of the night, they found me in my bed dragging me to the dark place underneath the world where dreams can't speak and demons taunt as they play twisted games with my soul. And with that comment or that post on her Facebook page, she put up a little poster. uh, There was a comment from a friend, Doris, that said, Fallon, you need to get some help. So it kind of sounds like she might have been in this really dark, maybe depression almost. Sounds like depression. Yeah, which is... Things aren't, things aren't looking well for her, and so then she goes into this, you know, we'll get into the timeline, but, you know, maybe made some decisions that day based upon that. How she was feeling, the yeah. The reflection of that, yes. So now we're going to jump into this timeline. It started on the evening of June 10th, 2018. Fallon was spotted on June 10th outside a Food Lion grocery store on Cherokee Street in Blacksburg, South Carolina. And this was according to Blacksburg Police Chief Jamie Ham. A police officer saw and spoke to Fallon at the corner shop store on Cherokee Street in Blacksburg, South Carolina. When we were doing the research, we couldn't locate a corner shop store on Cherokee Street, but we did find a corner stop on Cherokee Street, and that's about a half mile from the food line. So the police officer saw her in that general area. And on her missing poster, it states she, she did charge her phone at the corner stop. So now the evening of June 10th, and this will go into the morning of June 11th, she was picked up at a local car wash, then at a home on Highway 29, and then she went to Grover, North Carolina, then Lugoff, which I think is pronounced correctly, uh, Lugoff, South Carolina, which is about 100 miles south of the area she was hanging out in, and then ended up back in Gaffney Inn in Gaffney, South Carolina. So I'm wondering why the 200-mile round trip to Lugoff? And, you know, what happened to the male friend who picked her up? I'm sure the police have spoken to him, but, you know, there's not a lot of information out there, as we stated, and it's kind of hard to understand what she was thinking and doing. So now Fallon was the last seen at the Gaffney Inn, which now appears to be closed, and this is per her missing poster. She was seen with two men there that were cousins from Gaffney. And again, I think, you know, the police must have questioned these two men. And what do they say about what happened that evening? Why were they going down to lug off 100 miles away and back? Yeah. Now, four days later, June 14th, an officer with the Blacksburg police spotted her on Cherokee Street per the Shelby Star News. And then a few days after that, she was allegedly seen on another road in Cherokee County. So there were sightings after her last ping at the Gaffney Inn area, and it was by the Blacksburg police. So they seemed to know her and and know, you know that they actually did positively identify her. So now on July 5th, 2018, a little over three weeks after her official missing date on June 11th, a candlelight vigil was held at 8 p.m. at the Big Red Barn on East Cherokee Street in Blacksburg. Police Chief Jamie Ham said they have searched day and night for Fallon. Fallon's cousin Jamie Cooksey said that Fallon would not go this long without talking to her kids or her family. She was hoping the vigil might spur some new information or tips. The unknown is the worst part. I don't think any of our family will be able to have peace if we don't know what happened to her. And here's her first cousin Brandy speaking for the family. Hi, my name is Brandy. Fallon Cooksey's my first cousin. I miss Fallon more than I ever thought possible. I love her. I want her home. We all do. If anybody can help us, please help. Her kids would love to see their beautiful mom come home again. Then on July 7th, 
A handful of her family and friends searched for Fallon in a community-wide search. Searchers met at 7 a.m. Saturday in the parking lot of Dollar General, located on West Cherokee Street in Blacksburg. They searched for miles. Brandy Bradley, who is a friend of Fallon's, told Seven News, She's not my blood, but I want her home. Together, the group walked more than 11 miles through the woods near downtown Blacksburg. Marty Sellers also searched for Fallon. She stated, We covered Cherokee Falls, River Road, and Broad River. We came up with a few possible leads. All of them came up empty-handed. We haven't found her or any sight of her. Not a sight, nothing. No Facebook. Brandy added, no contact whatsoever. Her friends tell Seven News it's unlike Fallon to not check in on her children for this long, and that's the most alarming part of her disappearance. 24-7, she's always kept in contact with her kids, Brandy said. When our eyes close, we pray for her. When our eyes open, we pray for her, and we look for her. There's not a day that goes by in my life that I will not look for Fallon Michelle. It was also reported the group searched the boat dock at Dravo Road, a quarry at Mill Creek Road, and the area surrounding Cherokee Falls. The search party also canvassed a section of Cherokee Street in hopes of finding some trace of Fallon. Investigators also searched a number of abandoned buildings in Cherokee County, as well as area shelters. The 11-man department had been flooded with hundreds of tips and have followed each one of them. This morning, we've had 42 calls about this case, and my phone has rung three times just now. I guarantee you it's about this, Blacksburg Police Chief Jamie Hamm said. He said he's frustrated with the amount of wild, off-the-wall theories some callers have reported. We still have to follow them no matter what they are. It makes it very difficult to run an investigation. It's nonstop. We don't know if she is alive, if there has been foul play, or what happened. Chief Ham is hopeful that Fallon will be found alive, but said time is the enemy. Time makes a big difference. The longer it takes, the less likely that person is found. On August 4th, 2018, a new search was planned at the Dollar General parking lot at 7 a.m., and that was located at 310 West Cherokee Street. And then on August 13th, 2018, according to 7 News, two bodies were discovered in less than a week near Blacksburg. The first body was discovered by a South Carolina Department of Transportation worker, and he had been mowing grass near the intersection of Rock Springs Road and Shaman Road earlier that week. Investigators did not release the identity. Then Cherokee County deputies found a body believed to be that of Jeremy Philoate, Philoweat, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. The Landrum man went missing in July of 2018. Residents say the criminal activity is alarming from shootings to people just vanishing. Residents say they want to see law enforcement get a handle on the crime so they can feel safe again. November 10th, family and friends gathered Saturday for a candlelight vigil to pray for answers. I feel as though prayer is the only thing that has gotten us through the past five months. And this is offered by Jamie Cooksey, her cousin again. I hope we see a large turnout this Saturday of people who love Fallon and want to see her case get closure, just as we do. We will never stop searching for answers until we find them. The candlelight vigil was held at at 5 p.m. And prior to the vigil, a blood driver was held from noon until 5 in honor of Melissa Holland, Fallon's mom. I wonder, I wonder if she was having some health issues or why they had to hold that blood drive for her, but There was I guess a Facebook comment that said, my mom is sick and she deserves to know where Fallon is so she can take that worry away as she gets her treatments. So it sounds like something's going on with her health. Yeah, unfortunately. Now, family and friends have organized their own searches in recent months, and Blacksburg police have been leading the investigations. While an update on the ongoing probe was not immediately available, it had been estimated as of late August that Blacksburg police had already contributed more than 2,000 man hours in the search for Fallon. Police Chief Jamie Hamm said his office was following up on every lead that they got. You know, and again, it feels like the police department know Fallon and that they really are they really care for her and are taking an interest in her case. I agree, yeah. Which is very nice to see. December twenty fourth, from her Help Us Find Missing Fallon Michelle Cooksey Facebook page, her two precious children and her mom, sisters, grandparents, aunts, 
uncles, nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends have missed celebrating with her this Christmas. Her children will be waking up in just a few hours to find their presents left from Santa, and their mom won't be there to see their smiling faces. But you know what they all have wished for more than anything money could buy. That was for Fallon to be come home for Christmas. Wherever you are, Fallon, Merry Christmas. You are loved and missed so much. Now, June 11th, 2019, another vigil was held across the street from the Gaffney Inn to honor her memory. Her family and friends say it's hard dealing with her disappearance. And here's an audio clip of their difficulty during this time. It's been tough uh, the, the past year not knowing anything at all, like nothing. You know, we hear stories and people saying, well, I heard this, I heard this, but no one coming forward with anything concrete. You think you're there and then it just blows up right in front of your face. You know, you think you're on the right track and then you get a hundred more stories on top of what you think is going to crack the case, but it never does. And that audio clip was Jamie Cooksey, which is Fallon's first cousin. Family members feel frustrated with a lack of answers after all this time. Fallon's third cousin, Susie Thompson, stated, We shouldn't be here a year into this. It shouldn't take a year to find somebody in this tiny community. So now just kind of rethinking this whole case. I mean, they had her cell phone ping in the, near the Gaffney Inn. And she was active on text messaging until about 9.30 that morning. And then after that, her phone was just completely turned off or her battery died. And it hasn't since been turned back on. Something happened at that point, perhaps. Yeah, it's just strange. I mean, maybe she got in an argument with someone or maybe And if she's at the Gaffney Inn, because it pinged around that area Mm -hmm. and she was reported to be there at one point... I'm sure they've interviewed the staff. I'm sure they've looked at any cameras. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. So if there's a surveillance camera, they they could check that out. So I'm sure, you know, it sounds like the police aren't releasing a lot of information, but maybe they are really working this case and we don't know it. Well, and I feel like a lot of these cases we cover, we do have quite a bit of information, but I feel like the police always have something that they're not telling the public that they're constantly working on maybe. Right. But I don't know. It's just so, this is kind of a strange case for me that she just literally vanished. And it's not really clear her time ri- timeline and exactly. all her sightings. So Balance has a Facebook page and she also has another personal Facebook page and Fallon's Family and friends started the Facebook page, Help Us Find Fallon Cooksey, and they have about 550 followers. And if you do have any information about Fallon's disappearance or her whereabouts, please call the Blacksburg Police Department. Their phone number is 864-839-2331, or you can contact Crime Stoppers at one 888 crime sc and they want to remind everyone that you can always remain anonymous when you are calling in tips our contact information is mysteriously missing 411 at gmail.com you can always follow us on instagram which is mysteriously missing check out our youtube page where we have pictures and maps and just more information about the case that we're covering and you can always download our episodes they come out every sunday on itunes and podbean but we just we want to know what happened to Fallon and bring her back home. I mean, her whole family's wondering where she's at, and her poor two children, I mean... Her children deserve their mother home. Exactly. So thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you.